Hello everybody and welcome back to yet another video on this great channel that is about skateboarding. And as I'm sure that most of you that have been interested in skateboarding for a while or have been subscribed to my channel for a while already know, skateboarding has gone through its fair share of changes since the very beginning when surfers decided they wanted to surf on the streets. To today, where you have Johnny Blaze at 420 posting his gnarly sack on his Instagram, hoping that he gets a shout out from the Hall of Meat. And throughout all of these great changes, a whole lot of trends have been born and then have died in the cultural hive mind that is skateboarding. Someday everybody thinks that this one thing is really cool and the next day it's played out because everybody is doing it now. So without taking up any more time, let's get into the five skateboarding trends that died out. But first, as an honorable mention, I have to give it to the big baggy pants and baggy clothes for making such a huge comeback in the past year or so. If some of you youngsters didn't know, this was the hot boy look back in the 90s and early 2000s. I mean, who wouldn't want to be a human beanbag? It sounds awesome to me. You get people lay on you all the time. Yeah, you're, you're kind of round, soft. But jokes aside, baggy clothes restrict your movement a lot less than most other clothes. So they never really died out too hard to start with, except for that small trend of like super skinny pants. Uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't around for that, but I've heard the horror stories of it. But today, there are people wearing pants that are pretty much like parachutes. Like, these pants would be too big for back then. Like, they're pretending that fitting a quadruple XL pair of pants around your belt is somehow considered acceptable. But for me personally, I don't hate this trend. I actually like it a lot. I think it's as ridiculous as it is cool. So, yeah, just continue doing your thing, big baggy pants and baggy clothes, skaters and people. Okay, okay. So without taking up any more of your time yet again, because this honorable mention, let's actually get into the real video. Up first is we have releasing full videos and parts. This is by far the biggest change that skateboarding has had since the 90s and early 2000s. And although videos and parts have not died out entirely, I don't have to have lived through it myself to know that skateboarding videos will never be held at the same magnitude as they were back in the day. It's pretty obvious that most skateboarding today is watched either on YouTube or even more so on Instagram. Whereas before you had to wait for a new part to get released with your favorite skater to finally see some new footage. And today, all you have to do is just check their Instagram and you can literally scroll through an almost endless amount of content that they have posted. It isn't exactly uncommon for a skater to blow up, get noticed, or even get sponsored because of an Instagram clip that simply went viral. Or the ones that build their entire followings based on their style and skateboarding edits. I'm talking about you, Burberry Airy. This dude's entire image is based off of wearing off-whites and looking like a vampire. And I'll admit, I'm in this camp too. I started making videos from Instagram clips. And then I, I got here somehow. Still kind of trying to figure that one out. Now, obviously, I'm not going to be one of those guys that complains about the good old days when a new Baker video would last you a whole year of entertainment. Uh, because I was either not alive or I was literally a crayon eaten child back then. So I, I don't remember the good old days. But even though there are new skateboarding videos released today, I don't think it would be a really a shock to anyone for me to say that the golden era of skateboarding videos is over. And that's not exactly because people are putting out less parts or even full videos, or even the fact that most full skate videos today are around 20 minutes or even less, whereas before there are 30 minutes up to an hour. It's mostly because the impact that skateboarding videos had on the skateboarding culture is just gone today. You just won't get another girl skateboards mouse, a misled youth, or a baker 2G. There's just not going to be any other videos that are going to be able to match the cultural impact that those ones had. Sexy ass nigga right- oh that's me my bad. Or many others like it too I should say. Number 2. Vert skating. Okay I'll be real with you. It's a bit of a stretch to call vert skating a trend by itself. And to be fair, a lot of skaters still do ride vert, so it's like still a ton of vert contests and all that stuff. So it's it's not like vert skating is dead, and it's not like it's really a trend. Although, but let me kind of explain to you the way that I think it is a trend. Pretty much all I'm saying is that it used to be a lot more popular. Like there was a time when vert skating and pool skating was literally the only skating that people ever did. Making it technically the biggest trend in skateboarding history because when everybody decided that skateboarding was a fad for the third time or whatever in the late 1980s, I'll cover that a bit later in the video, 
Now the money stopped coming in and skate parks closed, which made vert ramps close also. And then out of the ashes of all that, street skateboarding rose above and became the supreme leader of the skateboarding universe. Just being more popular, you know, it's the most popular that there is today. But overall today, when you go to a skate park, it's pretty uncommon to see a vert ramp of any kind. I mean, usually you'll just see a vert bowl, which I guess is pretty similar in the way that it has vertical walls and you can do some more tricks on it, but uh, it, it's not a vert ramp, you know, it, it's just a little bit different. Overall, there's no denying that vert skating used to be a lot more popular than it is today especially, and I don't really see it gaining that much popularity, at least anything close to where what street skating is gaining right now. Number three, big bulky shoes. The DC shoes, the Osiris's, you name it. These can be almost seen as like a staple of early skateboarding culture. And they're pretty much a stereotype for skaters back in the early 2000s. They were big, they had lots of padding, they were probably pretty comfortable now that I think about it, and they were very ugly, at least to most people that are looking at them today, which I, I would not really exactly disagree with. They are, they are pretty ugly. I mean, just look at the laces. Looks like they're about a break from all the mass that's being held in that kind of shoe. The tongue on that shoe is so big, it could literally have its own zip code. Anyway, today it's pretty rare to see a skater, let alone anybody, rocking these kinds of shoes. But if you do see them, it means one of two things. They're either one, an insanely good skater that'll destroy everybody playing skate with their switch tricks, or two, they're just some hype beast wearing some really weird, like, I don't know, dad shoes that are popular right now, or just flexing a rare pair of Osiris's. Number four, camo pants. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about any just regular old pair of regular camo pants. I'm talking about these orange and pink and whatever goddamn neon colored camo cargo pants they were handing out to every single skater in 2016. These camo cargo pants were flying off the damn shelves at Zoomies, and they ravaged the streets of skateboarding like crack in the 80s. You simply could not escape these pants. They got so popular that even hype beasts started getting in. That's when you know it's getting bad. It was as if an LGBT parade decided to become a militia overnight. And as quickly as the trend blew up in skateboarding, it died. Although it did stick around for a good year or so, maybe. But I haven't seen anybody wearing these types of pants in a very long time, and let's hope it stays that way. Number five, skateboarding becoming a trend. Skateboarding by itself has been a trend many times in the past for the first time happening in the early to mid 1960s. You know that meme of that like first fish that crawled out of the ocean like a billion years ago and now I have to pay taxes because of it? Well, in skateboarding history, that fish was just some California surfers that got bored when the waves got flat and invented a little thing called sidewalk surfing. The times were just different. The economy was booming, cars were built really well, um, People were racist. Wait, I mean, I never said these were like good things or anything, you know. But anyway, back to skateboarding. It all started when, when roller skate trucks got attached to wooden boxes and two by fours and eventually something that could be considered a board shape. Freestyle in slalom skateboarding was just a new big thing that everybody was doing. That was until it was deemed unsafe in 1966. People, mostly parents, said skateboarding bad, no more skateboarding. Then nearly a decade later in 1975, those same kids grew up a little bit and skateboarding began to rise in popularity once again. This time around, things were different. Most notably, thanks to Frank Nasworthy, polyurethane wheels became the standard for all skateboards. Whereas before, wheels were made out of clay. Decks also became bigger themselves and sometimes were over 10 inches wide. And before you know it, the Z-Boys got everybody skating empty swimming pools and vert skating became very, very popular. And then once again, after blowing up and becoming the hot new trend that everybody was doing, skateboarding died out once again. Skate parks couldn't keep up with the high liability costs, which led the parks to close. Vert skaters had to make their own ramps, while freestyle skaters continued to evolve their style. And eventually throughout the 80s, thanks to Gons, Rodney Mullen, and lots of other pioneers, Street skating was born, which took off a lot in the 90s, and even more so in the early 2000s when Tony Hawk Pro Skater was released. And around for the past 10 to 15 years, skateboarding has been slowly and gradually declining in popularity up until recently, about last year, when skateboarding became very, very trendy all of a sudden on, of all places, TikTok. And that's when everybody thought that they were a skater for a few months and they rushed to Zoomies until they realized, wait, 
Skateboarding is actually really hard. I have to uh, have a lot of commitment and I have to stick with it for a really long time to get anywhere. And, uh, oh, M M Miata, M Miata. Yeah, I like Miatas. So they just moved on to car culture and skyrocketed the price of Miatas as if it was some shit coin that Elon Musk posted on his Twitter. But you know what's kind of funny? This whole TikTok trend, you couldn't really see its effects on skateboarding. It's not like the skate parks were overflowing or anything. So what does that tell us? That most people on TikTok base their personality off of whatever is trending and don't actually like skateboarding and only like it for the image that it gives off? Well, yes. But ultimately, it's that skateboarding has fallen and risen in popularity in the past and will most likely do so in the future. But at this point, it has grown out of simply being a fad or a trend that people do because it's popular. And instead, it has grown from a very small community of people into a whole culture that participates in it across the world. And it will most likely never die off, at least entirely. And it will definitely keep evolving just like it has in the past. So anyway, let me know what trends you guys think died off in skateboarding and which ones they think will come back. As for now, that is all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you once again tomorrow. Peace out.